He was an all-star and an NBA slam dunk champ, played for 11 seasons in the NBA. Cedric Sabalos is now joining us live, bounces between L.A. and Phoenix. You know, it, it, the Suns are interesting. Um, Kevin Durant is the kind of guy, because he doesn't need the ball a lot, Cedric, you can plug him into any team and he just works. Um, I, I, a lot of people are concerned about the Phoenix Suns depth. You watch their games. You know them very well, their personnel. I'm not too concerned with their depth. I think they come into the playoffs rested. What concern, I mean, what, what are you surprised at how good they've been? How fast with KD? Let's start with that. Well, they've been really good. I mean, Kevin is just, uh, like you said, he's a fit and play kind of player. You put him in any scenario and he can perform. Uh, he can come off the dribble. He can come off the screens. He can s set screens. And the most important thing about Kevin Durant that people don't really give him credit for, he's a wonderful and an excellent defensive player. So he helps his team out a lot. You can see when Kevin was out, Phoenix's defense was really, really down, not having Cam or, or Mikel uh, being their two defensive players that they traded away to Brooklyn. Uh, worrying about the bench may be difficult if they get into foul trouble, uh, so to speak. And Kevin is not a person to really get in foul trouble. Nope. And neither is Chris Paul. And I think that's what your concerns are. Uh, but if they stay within the course, don't get themselves in foul trouble, I don't think the bench will be that big of a factor. Uh, Cam is, is is very dangerous as a, a, a a person coming off the bench as a point guard because his energy is there, but then sometimes he makes a lot of um, young mistakes or, or over exuberant ex mistakes, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, with Chris Paul, you kind of get the steadiness and he calms everybody down. Yeah. Uh, but I think their biggest problem is probably going to be the big fella in the middle, Aiden. Is uh, you know, how will he demand the basketball? And if he's not getting the basketball, will he continue to play hard? That's what I'm worried about. Probably. Yeah, he's not a great defender. So he he's always felt like um, he's had a little chip on his shoulder. He's not getting the ball enough. And we've talked about this. When you play f with great offensive players like Golden State, Draymond Green has come to terms with what he is, and he's leaned into what he is. How hard do you think? We've been talking about this. So the Warriors go get Gary Payton again. That's going to take away minutes from maybe a Jordan Poole, who's a bad defender, whereas uh, Peyton's a great defender, and here comes De'Aaron Fox. There's maybe a chemistry issue. Kaminga now, less minutes. Andrew Wiggins, real minutes. You tell me, you get into the playoffs, and now you start messing with the rotation. What's your feeling this morning on the Warriors going forward? Well, I think their success is going to be going small, uh, having Wiggins and, and Draymond in there. And then obviously Poole coming in and out. But I think that's what they brought Gary Payton II second back for, is to defend guys like Darren Fox, uh, to defend guys uh, maybe if they if they get a hold of a Chris Paul or a Dar uh, Devin Booker uh, later on down the line. Yeah. And then even Murray in Detroit. That's what they brought him in for because obviously uh, Curry – you know, being a little light on the defensive side, but we need him. They need him more on the offensive side than they do on the defensive slide side. So, yeah, I think they'll go small. They had success uh, in winning a championship in their previous year, and I think that's what they'll do again. Just go a little bit smaller, uh, and hopefully Wiggins will get himself in shape uh, to help them rebound with Draymond Green. So the Lakers are interesting. They started the year, and they asked Darvin Ham, a rookie coach, okay, work with this group. And it wasn't, and everybody knew it. And so they move off Westbrook. They move in a bunch of new parts, and suddenly they're playing well. I, I said, Darvin Ham's not going to win coach of the year, but when you consider what he started with and what he's created, Darvin's had a great year. Uh, Austin Reeves has become highly productive. Is this Laker, they've won 9 of 11. Is it fool's gold, Cedric, because they've beaten mostly bad teams? Or do you think the Lakers are a viable postseason team going forward? Well, you got a king. I mean, you got one of the guys who's probably the, the best basketball player, uh, arguably, uh, within the top five on the court. And then you add a, a healthy Anthony Davis. You got to remember, even though Coach Ham did not uh, have his whole roster put together as far as who's going to be where, who's going to stay and go, the injury plug. Anthony Davis a little bit injured, uh, LeBron James a little bit injured, and then Reeves comes along and just grows up in front of our eyes. I think it's such a wonderful thing. But I think the biggest thing is going to be their outside shooting. Uh, when you do clamp down on Davis and they move the ball around, do they knock down threes? Uh, do they, you know, uh, pursue themselves going to the basket? Uh, LeBron is going to be LeBron, especially in the playoffs. He's going to get calls. He's going to get to the basket. Uh, he's going to be effective. But I think the biggest thing is their outside shooting. Will they be able to compete? Uh, when you match three for three. And I'm not saying go out and shoot a bunch of threes like you're Golden State. Uh, but if they whip that ball around and knock it down, 
uh, a lot of guys going to have to stroke those threes for those uh, for this team to be successful. We're going to show you a piece of video, the T Wolves. I'm sure you've seen it, where Rudy Gobert. Oh, now it's uh, so we had a little bit of a scrum with the Clippers, but Gobert now is not going to travel with the team. Meaning, yeah. you know, the players probably went to Chris Finch and said, "Hey, man, he was way out of line here." Uh, Gobert had issues in Utah with Donovan Mitchell. Now he's got issues in Minnesota. What did you make of this situation? It's tough because we don't know exactly what was said or, or what the situation was, whether it's, whether it's just adjustments they're trying to make on the court or was it something personal that these two have been brewing up for a while? Uh, you know, you, you got to go back to preseason with Draymond Green and Poole going in for each other. And I think that's why their road record, the Warriors, as, as I'm talking about, is the way it is because us as players, we come together on the road. And if you have some sort of beef between uh, players, people kind of separate and choose their own little posse, so to speak, to be with each other. And I think Rudy uh, uh, definitely was in the wrong here, especially, you know, they've had fights. Teammates have had fights before, but having it right there on the court live, all those cameras down, I think the biggest thing is going to hurt them is obviously him not traveling and not playing in the playing game. That's, that's going to be effective. Uh, uh, for Minnesota, his defensive presence and also his uh, the way he races to the rim uh, is going to be very missed. And and I could see if it was a series and that you stopped them for one game, but one game in the play is really going to hurt the Timberwolves. Uh, before we let you go, we've sort of ignored the East today because we kind of feel like we know who's good. Milwaukee's good, but a little old. Uh, I like Boston, but only when Robert Williams is available. Cleveland's good, but kind of young. Philadelphia, I question in close game situationally. Do you feel in the East, the teams you've watched as you've been in Phoenix or L.A. and they've come to town, is there a team in the East you absolutely think is a little under the radar, a little overrated? What is your strongest feeling about an Eastern team? Yeah, under the radar, you go got to go with Jock Vaughn and what he's done with the Brooklyn Nets. That trade that they made for Kyrie to – to Dallas is just unbelievable. And I think that's going to be a key portion uh, to that thing. When you got Dorian Finney-Smith's defensive presence, you make the trade for Phoenix for KD and you get Mikel Bridges and Cam Jordan, Cam Johnson. And these guys are defenders who's going to have to guard uh, the Milwaukee greats and the Boston greats and the Philadelphia greats. And I think that's going to be the key. They're not guys who demand the basketball or have egos. And that could be a key for them uh, moving up in the playoffs. They don't have a dominant superstar and, you know, you know, for ratings for TV, you know, Colin, that might be a problem, but I do see them scaring some people or surprising some teams in the East. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.